uh, in the previous video, we talked about how to um, import uh, the path division files for the for the wheels and also uh, the wheel log data. Uh, we looked at the different ways of um, importing those two kinds of data and uh, some other related uh, things, related topics. All right. So now we have um, we have uh, like 15 wheels, right? And then we have imported. We have their path data, so you can sort of see the wheels are not exactly vertical anymore. It's got an angle, right? It's, a, uh, it's not vertical wheels anymore because we have the path data in it. And then and then we also have, uh, in our input pane, we also have this particular section. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five kinds of logs th that we have uh, already imported, right, from the from the last files that we imported last time, right? And the last time we looked at how we can actually display those logs on the three-dimensional window, right? We looked at the, for example, permeability. If we want to sort of see the permeability along the wheels, we can uh, see them, right? If we want to... Uh, see the porosity that can be right different different ways of displaying the the well logs um when we imported uh the log data uh, we the dialog box allowed uh, allowed us to specify the kind of a property template that we want to use for uh sort of uh, displaying the logs right um we had we had two logs that we didn't find an exact correspondence for uh, for the logs, right? Net gross is one of them, right? Um, we didn't find a, a property template for exactly the net gross. But after you have imported the logs, you can change the template from inside of this uh, this this uh, this item. So if you right click on the net gross, or you can just double click on it, right? Either way is fine. If you right click, click and then select the settings, right, it's going to give you this uh, settings dialog box. And then another way of bringing up the settings dialog box is just by double clicking on it. So this is a clicking on the uh, the the name of the log, right, underneath the global wheel logs. So so the settings or the changes that you're going to apply here is going to be reflected on all the wheels, right. For all the wheels that have a net gross um, log, right? So B1 doesn't have any logs, so so it's not going to have any effect. But uh, but but for every other wheels that have this net gross log, the changes you're going to apply here is going to uh, take effect on all those all those wheels. So if you double click on it, and then um, and then you're going to get uh, like one, two, three, four, five, five different tabs, right? Style, style. Um, uh, so, so the the style dialog box allows you to actually change the the the, the display of the log. So, so suppose you change your log as three D pipe, your log in two D. The default is your log in two D, right? Suppose you change it to like your log as three D pipe. Apply, right? Uh, let's just click on OK, and then let's just display logs, right? Then it's gonna look like that, right? And maybe that's what you wanted, but maybe it's not. I, you know, it depends upon your particular application, right? But this, but the, uh, but what I wanted to show you is the is under the info tab. Under the info tab, right? Under the info tab, you have a template, right? When we imported the last files, uh, the 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 property template that we selected was not exactly. Uh, for net cross, net cross ratio, it's not exactly for that, right? So at this place, we can actually change that. So, so now it's like above contact. It's uh, it's not really the right 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 template, right? We can change that by clicking on this um, uh, here, right? And then let's just press in on the keyboard, right? Then it brings us to the first occurrence of a property with a name that starts with a, a n, so it's net pay. That's uh, sort of, the, and then the wrong one right beneath net pay is net gross ratio. Right? We can just select that, and just select this uh, net gross ratio. Right. So now we have a correct template for for the net gross ratio. Right. 
uh, color tables. Um, for now, let's uh, let's not look at the color tables yet. Let's just click on apply, and then uh, all the uh, all the templates, all the templates for for all the wheels are going to have the. So so if you look at A10, net gross right. You want to click on it. Settings. Info. Right. So now the uh, it's gonna use the net gross template, right? Um, by default. Oh, it looks like I changed the style setting. Change the style setting. Let me go back. We'll go back to change it back to a 2D plot. Okay. All right. Um, another one is uh, the full view phases, right? So it depends upon if we want to change it or not. The the template that we are using for now is uh, phases. So it's got like a one, two, three, four, five, five different phases, right? Um. But if we want to sort of be really accurate, for example, uh, we want to choose fluvial phases, right? You have a template that's called fluvial phases, right? And these fluvial phases are going to have a color table that's like uh, four different kinds. Right? But let's uh, let's leave it for let's just leave it as phases for now, right? Because later on we're going to look at how to how to how to display those uh, phases in 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 log file in in the in the cross in the wheel cross sections, right? But if you want to change the color table, you can also do that. Click on more, for example, right? And then you have a, uh, if you look at the, all the different color table, you have a, uh, you have a one that's for fluvial, right? You have a fluvial phases, a, a fluvial color table. That's like one, two, three, four, five, five different colors, five, five different colors. But now let's uh, not change that yet. So if we want to look at, right, okay, right. So now we have finished importing uh, pretty much all the data for all the wheels. Those are raw data, right? Those are raw data that's collected directly in the field. And then based upon that raw data, uh, there are more data that can be derived. Those derived data, later on we can also import those derived data. Right? The first. Uh, Derived data we're going to try to import is uh, the wheel top data. Wheel top data. So, um, but for now let's uh, let's uh, let's try to do some management on the wheels, right? So, uh, if you right click on it, if you right click on the wheels folder, uh, you're going to see something that's called a wheel manager, right? And then if you click on it, it's going to give you a table. It's going to give you a table for all the wheels that you have imported. Um, if you click on the Home tab, there's another place that you can find a the, the wheel manager. Maybe it's in stratigraphy. Right, wheel data manager. Right, uh, wheel manager, log attributes. Uh, let's look at the wheel manager. Right. And inside this wheel manager, you're you're gonna see a sort of uh, overview, the, the overview of all the all the wheels that you have uh, uh, imported, right? The data of all the wheels you have imported, and this table also allows you to, for example, add items into the table, right? Um, it also allows you to delete the uh, wheels from this particular table, right? You can sort of do some uh, really simple stuff. And then minor, the, the wheel symbol is going to tell you uh, what those wheels are. Minor oil, minor oil, oil, minor gas, right? And then their locations, the different column. This is in UTM meters, right? And then it also displays latitude and longitude, which are converted from the UTM by patrol automatically, right? And, uh, and uh, some of the data were derived from the wheel head data, data right? And uh, some of the data are divided, derived from the uh, past deviation bias. Right? And uh, 
you can also change the wheel names from here. Right. Um, default attributes, user attributes, check shots, wheel logs. So I also did, uh, display the wheel logs. Right. So then that's the one, two, three, four, five. That's the five. Uh, five logs that we have imported, right? So B1 doesn't have those logs, so it's going to display no, 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 right? And then uh, for other wheels, you have yes, because you have those logs, right? Um, and uh, uh, log attributes, log attributes. Then it's going to display some of the uh, more complete information about the logs in each of the wheel, right? And those are those are. So, for example, for the for the template you know, that you just uh, so net gross, that's what we have actually adjusted but manually, right? That's the template for net gross for all the different wheels, A10. A15 up to like a C7, I think. Right. So those spreadsheets are, allows you actually uh, give you an overview about those wheel data, and then through those spreadsheets, you can also manually or um, you can manually adjust some of the parameters or change the or, in, or, or add more data or delete some data. That's um, that's another way for you to uh, to to interact with the wheel data, right? In addition to sort of operating on them uh, graphically or through button clicks. Right? Um, now let's 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 organize all the wheels into different folders, right? Sometimes for this particular for this particular example, we have fifteen wheels. That's not too many. That's just a very small number of wheels. But for some data set or some projects, you could have like hundreds or thousands of uh, wheels, right? And it might be a good idea to just uh, organize those wheels based upon uh, different criteria. So, so let's try to insert some folders into it. Right click on it and then uh, insert a new folder. Right. And then if I slow double click, let's create like three different folders. A, that's for just A wheels. Um, and then B for all the B wheels. And then C for all the C wheels. Right? You don't really have to sort of uh, organize wheels by their uh, wheel name, right? You can organize it based upon the purpose, for example, right? In injection wheels, right? Uh, based upon the purpose of a particular wheel, or based upon regions, right? And Patrol actually allows you to use a polygon to select a region, and then you can put uh, all the wheels within that polygon to a particular folder, but for now let's just do something relatively simple. We can just uh, create like three subfolders for A, B, and C, right? and then click on one of them, and then shift hold uh, hold on the shift key, and then select the three A fold, uh, A wheels, and then just drag them into the A folder. Right, and then we can do the same thing for B. Uh, hold down the shift key, and then select all the B wheels, and then drag them into uh, the B folder, and then select the, the C, all the C wheels. And then drag them into the C folder. Right. So now we've got. Um, um, for some reason, my. So let me readjust to the. Oh, I see. For some, uh, once we have organized them, the, the property of the display actually has changed. Let's. Uh, let's uh,
So no, we still can see the see all the whales. So this way we can actually organize our uh, whales in a cleaner way. Right. Um, so suppose we look at the, in a two D window. In a two D window, the whale symbols are still too small. Let me just make some settings. Change it to like three hundred two D. It's changing. Why oh, phone size is so small? Okay, so now let's uh, let's try to sort of uh, import some additional data. That's the wheel top data, right? Wheel top data. So once we have logs, uh, people can actually derive those uh, locations or the depths of those horizons from uh, from those uh, uh, log data, right? And uh, that's one of the important information that we can obtain from the uh, wheels. Um, later on, we can actually construct uh, horizons from those uh, wheel tops. Right. So, so again, let's go back to the home tab. Let's go back to the home tab, and then underneath the folder, we can try to import a, a new wheel tops folder. Right, the wheel tops folder is not unique for every project. You can for for every project you can have like multiple wheel tops folder. Right, it's not like the wheels folder. So so for now we have we have a wheels folder inside of the input panel. So new wheel folder is grayed out, but the, the wheel tops folder, if you insert one, right? If you go back, you can still insert more, right? So so depending upon um, the person who did the wheel tops, right? You could have multiple wheel tops, right? So for one person, you could have sort of divided the logs in one way, and then uh, for the other person. Uh, he, he or she may may have divided the logs into a different uh, the world hops in a different way. So so you you can have multiple world hops, right? Let's uh, let's delete this one. And uh, so now maybe let's change change the change the name to a different one. Let's just call it Plan A or something. Plan A. That's one of the plans for dividing up. The logs into like a multiple sections, right? And picking wheel, oh, picking wheel tops, picking wheel tops, right? For now, there's nothing in it. For nothing. So, so if you look at the, the different uh, items inside of the plan, plan A, you have a uh, stratigraphy forts and others, right? You have a uh, different uh, kind of wheel tops. Right? For now, none of them actually has anything, right? Stratigraphy has empty forts. Others are all empty. Now let's import it. Again, right click on the wheel top folder and then you can just uh, import on selection. Import on selection. Right. And then we can just navigate, navigate to our example data set. And then uh, click on wheel tops. And then you can select the wheel tops underscore type. That's the uh, ASCII file that uh, we're going to use. And then you have to sort of make sure that the files of type is set at Perpetual world tops, ASCII, right? Um, so let's just open it. So again, it's an ASCII file, right? So you can actually examine it. So at the bottom of the dialog box, it's going to display the first thirty lines of that particular text file. So, so, so you can imagine what's uh, what's actually the content inside of this particular file. It's a uh, so the first column is going to be the wheel name, right? And then the second column is going to be the name of the horizon, base Cretaceous, top Tarbert, top Nice, top Eve. And then the third, the third column. So for this particular data set we are using, 
this the third column is actually the measured depth, right? But depending upon usually it's measured depths. Usually it's measured depths. It's telling you the depths of base Cretaceous, this particular horizon at this particular well, right? And uh, but but depending upon the particular project, you could have a different uh, uh, meaning for each of the different columns. For now, and then and then the last column is um, kind of important. It tells you it's a horizon. It's a horizon, right? You could have different kinds of uh, uh, world hops, right? Sometimes it's fault, right? And sometimes it's others. So so basically, basically, if you specify horizon, and then all those world hops are going to go into the stratigraphy folder on the plane A, right? And if you specify the last column as fault, and then it's going to, patrol is going to treat it as a fault. And then it's going to go into the faults, right? And then if you specify nothing, if you don't say anything here, then it's going to be treated as others, right? So depending upon what's actually in the last column, uh, the imported world top could go into different subdirectories, uh, subfolders on a plane A, right? And then and then we have to sort of uh, sort of adjust the top part of the table to make sure that it's consistent with the format of our file. So the first column is not X. It's a, it's supposed to be the will 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 name. It's a text, right? And then the second column is supposed to be the surface, right? The surface it's also supposed to be a text, right? And then the third column is supposed to be MD. Measure depth. That's meter. And then the fourth to, the fourth column is supposed to be the type, actually, the type of the surface. Uh, The type, right? It's the type, and then we can just delete all the rest of the columns. Hold down the shift key, click on the first fifth column, and then hold down the shift key, and then click on the thirteenth column, and then we can just click use this button to to delete all those redundant columns. Because it doesn't have a header line, so the data actually starts from the first line. That's that's the first line is already data. There's no header to it. So the number of header lines is zero, right? And then the the wheel tops for all the different wheels are inside of the one file. So you can really see A10, A15, uh, A16, B2 on the first 30 lines, right? And uh, in fact, uh, this one file actually contains the wheel tops for all wheels, right? In practice, it may not be the case. It may not be the case. The 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 world hops for different wheels could be in different files. And if that's the case, you can select multiple files at the same time. And then once you have done the configuration here, you click on OK for all. But for now, it's like a, just a one file. So there's not really that much of a difference between OK for all for OK and OK. But nevertheless, let's click on OK for all. And now we can, if we look back, if we look back, now stratigraphy now has stuff in it, right? It's uh, it's got it's got it's got content. It's got content, right? So those names are actually the names of those surfaces in our well top data file, right? So base Cretaceous top tablet, uh, and then top knees, top eve, and then we also have um, tablet one and tablet two, right? And then knees one. Those are actually smaller horizons. Right. Smaller horizons inside smaller sort of interfaces between two large interfaces, right? And then what we can sort of pay attention to is uh, the zone here, right? So the interface itself doesn't really have any thickness, but if you have like two different interfaces, then the sort of interval between them actually has a thickness, and that thick that 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 that, that zone that zone between two interfaces is a a separate object, right? It's called a zone base Cretaceous. And then here it's called a zone top tablet, right? So when you see zone base Cretaceous, what, I, what what this object actually means is that it's the it's the interval that goes from base Cretaceous down to top tablet. That's the interval. That's this is a volume, right? But the so so it has thickness, right? But base Cretaceous and top tablet, these are two interfaces. Interfaces doesn't have uh, don't 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 have that, don't have a don't have thickness, right? So these are just the zero thickness surfaces. 
And if you don't want to see the zones, you just want to see the interfaces, you can right click on the stratigraphy and then uh, you have an option that's called a hide zone icons. You can click on it, then all the zones are going to just uh, sort of disappear from the view. They are still there, it's just uh, not being displayed. Right? And then if you want to sort of get it back, show zone icons, then it's going to show it, right? Let's hide the zone icons first. Right, that's um, that's the that's the world ops, right? That's the world ops, and if you want to sort of look at the world ops um, on this uh, three dimensional view, you can display it because you have a gray box in front of it, and for now the gray box is not uh, checked yet. So if you check it, you are supposed to see it, but for some reason uh, it's not displayed correctly on my machine. And if you want to sort of adjust how it's displayed, you can sort of double click on it. And then underneath the style tab, you can you can make make adjustment. All right. For example, you can change the size. You can change how it's displayed. Is it a 3D sphere or 3D box or uh, as well top symbol or as a, you can change the shape. You can change the size. Um, uh, and then number annotation, right? For now, the font is like 30. You can sort of change it like uh, 75 maybe. Then you might be able to see the text better. Right. Uh, 75 is probably still not enough. Maybe let's give it 150. Right. So now it looks like uh, it's clear. If the display is, uh, if, if the world hopes are displayed correctly, you should be able to see like a three dimensional spheres that's attached to the the the, the world world trajectory, the world path, right? And uh, those uh, spheres, three D spheres, are going to be corresponding to those different uh, uh, numbers, those uh, measured depth numbers. Um, But a better way to actually examine those log data and also the world top data is actually through a world section, world section window. It's not through a 3D or 2D window. It's actually through a world section window. So now let's look at how do we actually create a world section window. On a world section window, you can uh, examine the the details of those logs and also world tops. Right. So for now, we're sort of mainly staying inside of this. Uh, Home tab. Most of the buttons are kind of inside of this uh, particular ribbon, right? But now let's let's click on the second one, a stratigraphy tab, and then it's going to give us a, a different set of buttons, right? And all those buttons allow us to actually uh, examine those uh, well data, oh, uh, well data in more detail, right? So, and one of those buttons that's kind of important is called a new well section window. That's this button. That's this button, right? And if we click on it, then it's going to give us a, a dialog box, right? So whenever we try to create a wheel section window, there's going to be new data that's going to be created, right? And this new data is called cross sections. Cross sections is more like a data object. It's some kind of a, a it's some kind of a data object that allows you to actually configure which wheel is going to go into this particular cross section. So cross section actually goes into the input pane. And here you can sort of decide what's going to be the name of that particular cross section. Right. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just accept the default value and later on we can change it. Right. And then that's, uh, that's, that's going to be the data the new data that will be created by this kind of process, right? It's a cross-section database. And then there's a second section that's called a template. Right. You have two different choices. You can either create a new template and then or use existing template. Right. What exactly is a template, right? Template is going to control uh, how the logs, how the log curves or the uh, and also the wheel tops data, those kind of data are going to be displayed for every wheel, right? 
once we start to look at a, a specific example, you have a better idea about what a template actually controls. So, so now let's let's try to create a new one. Let's. Uh, um, what are the what are the what are the let's let's uh, um let's change the let's call it gr gamma ray and then permeability prm and then porosity por that's going to be three logs we're going to use to actually as an example right so do we want to use the same kind of template always do this for new well section windows or do we want to just uh, uh, apply this setting to new or to, to this particular to this particular well section window right? and then always do this for new well uh, show template settings we can configure template settings later on right and for now let's just click on okay and now we can sort of see a well well section window one and then underneath the cross sections, we're going to have a cross section that's called X section one, right? And for now, we haven't actually added anything to this particular cross section yet. But if you want to do that, let's, um, uh, for example, uh, the first thing we want to do is probably just to add some wheels to this particular wheel section, right? So, so let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. The e there are several different ways for adding wheels to this particular cross section. The, f the easiest way is probably just to click on the on the wheels, basically. Uh, select the wheels inside of this. When when this window is active, you can select the wheels. Select the gray box in, in front of the wheels, right? Let's so let's click on C3. So as soon as we click on C3, you're gonna see a track here for C3. Right. And then maybe let's uh, try another one. Let's let's do B nine. Let's be B nine. Let's do B nine. That's another track, right? And for now, for now, uh, so so the 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 number that's displayed between them is telling you what's actually the distance between these two wheels, right? C three and B nine, they are separated by like a three hundred, uh, three thousand two hundred and seven meters. And then this track that's being displayed, it's actually telling you what the track actually is, is SSTVD, SSTVD. SSTVD, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's sub C, true vertical depth, I think, right? Sometimes it's called TVD SS, true vertical depth sub C, right? depending upon the software you're using, uh, could have a different uh, kind of convention. Right? SSTVD just means sub C TVD. Uh, you can change the name of this, you can change the track later on, but uh, for now, the default value seems to be reasonable, right? True vertical depth sub C. Our wheels are actually all offshore, so, so, so that's a reasonable depth track, right? And then the next number displayed underneath it is the, actually the scale of that particular track. So this one is 1 to 5,483, and this one is 1 to 1,687. Uh, Right, and then you have wheel symbols on top of it. So, so this track is for C three, and then this track is for B nine, and then let's add one more A track, uh, A wheel. So let's do A sixteen. Right, so A sixteen is separated from like B nine by like uh, one thousand two hundred seventy one meters. Right, um, that's for selecting the wheels, right? That's for selecting the wheels, and then, and then. Uh, we can select the log we want to display, right? And the the template that we are using is called a, a gamma ray perm and porosity, right? So let's just display these three uh, gamma uh, perm, right? And then porosity, right? And as you actually click on those uh, those uh, those global wheel logs, those logs are being are, are being added. To all the three different wheels, right? To C three B nine and uh, A sixteen. That's the three wheels that we're actually looking at. Right? And then, as we add more of those logs, we're going to get more tracks. Actually, those things are called tracks, right? So gamma is a, a track, and then perm is another track, and then porosity is another track, right? Those things are called tracks. And then. Uh, and here it's going to show the unit, unit 
GAPI, MD, uh, middle cube over middle cube, and that, that's for the different, uh, the three different properties. And then the numbers, the numbers actually shows the range of the data. So it goes from like, gamma goes from like 25.18 to 163.74. Perm goes from like one millidarsity to uh, 10,000 millidarsity or something. Maybe, is that right? Doesn't seem to be. And then porosity goes from like a 0 0.0318 to 0.2645 for this particular track, uh, for this particular wheel, right? And then for, 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 for for B9 wheel, you're going to have a different range, and then for OSD, uh, maybe that kind of thing, or have a different range, right? So that's three wheels that we selected uh, just by clicking on the, click on the wheels, right? Clicking on the wheel, uh, gray box in front of the wheel name, basically, right? But now if we go back to the 3D window, if we go back to the 3D window, Uh, let me let me turn off the wheel tops. We don't want to see the wheel tops on the 3D window yet. Uh, where the, okay, let me click off this thing. Right. And then and then if we go back to the 3D window, you're gonna see a gray box in front of X section one. And if back in back in the wheel section window, you're gonna see that uh, there's a there's a radio symbol. There's a radio button in front of the cross section, right? And it's already checked. It doesn't allow you to actually make any changes anymore. But if you go back to the 3D window, you're going to see the, the, the uh, there's a gray box in front of X section one. And if you sort of click on it, it's going to display the so-called wheel fence. Right? This is called a wheel fence, and it's got a name on it, X section one, cross section one. And this wheel fence shows you the three-dimensional uh, sort of uh, view of um, the plane that goes across these three different wheels, right? That's uh, C3 uh, and what? C3, B9, and uh, A16, right? Right. And on the two-dimensional view, you can... Can I see on the two-dimensional view? Yeah, that's the two-dimensional view, right? If you sort of, sort of, sort of pay attention to the, to where the, where the blue line actually is, you can sort of see it's not exactly passing through the, 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 the well head symbol, right? So the, the default behavior is that the, it's going to actually connect the bottoms of the wheels. Right, so all the bottoms of the wheels are going to be lying on this particular plane. Right. This is particularly clear for C3. The wheel head is like a, lying at a kind of a big distance from this plane. The plane is basically connects all the, the, the bottom, the bottom of all the different, all the three wheels. Actually. And inside of this kind of three-dimensional view, and also inside of the two-dimensional window, two-dimensional window, you're going to be able to actually have an active button that's called cross-section editing. Right. This button is grayed out when you are actually inside of the wheel section window, when you are trying to sort of put together those logs, trying to examine those logs. Right. So, so if you actually uh, make this wheel section window active, the X section editing button is grayed out. You cannot really uh, use it, right? But but in a three D manual window, a three D window, uh, you will be able to actually see this button, right? And I suppose suppose um, suppose we click on this button, and then you're gonna see a tool palette. You're gonna see this tool palette. And this tool palette is telling you that X section editing. So it's gonna provide you some additional buttons for you to actually edit this particular cross section. Right. So you can sort of see the shape of the cursor has changed. It has been changed to a, a cross. Right. It's been changed to a cross. 
So when you are trying to operate on something, uh, let's 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 close this uh, box first, and then change the change the cursor to to the hand. So now let's uh, let's try to edit this particular cross section that we just created by by highlighting it, by highlighting it, right? And then one uh, when when this when this item is being clicked has uh, uh, so so the, the so the font is like in the bold face. So this item has been selected, right? When this item is being selected, let's click on X section editing, right? And then if we sort of do any kind of operations by using this button when the cursor is sort of in the cross shape, right? Then we're gonna add stuff. We're gonna add new wheels or delete wheels. This button is gonna allow you to delete wheels from the existing cross section, right? So if we want to add, for example, 18 to the cross section to this particular wheel fence, then we can just click on 18. You can sort of see it's uh, it's extending this X section one to include 18. If you want to sort of exit the picking mode, if you want to exit the add wheel mode or X section uh, editing mode, you, mode, you can just uh, uh, click the V key on your keyboard or just click here. Right, either way is fine. Let's just click here. Now we're going back to the viewing mode. Right, we're not. This this button is no longer active. It's not active. Right, and then if we go back to the wheel section window, if we click here. Right, there should be one more wheel that's being added. That's a ten. That's a ten. Right. At the beginning, we only have like three wheels, but now we have four wheels inside this wheel section window. Right, and you must have noticed that when we clicked on that particular a ten wheel, all the logs are automatically displayed. Right. Because because the the wheel that's being added to the to the to the to the to the to this particular window is using the grperm pool template. Right. So by default, it's going to use this particular template that's in this in this particular active window, well cross section window. So once you apply this template to this A10 wheel that you just added. It's gonna the 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 window is automatically gonna display these three properties gamma perm and porosity. Right. And again, the tool palette is not gonna in this particular window. It's not gonna allow you to actually add wheels or delete the wheels from the cross section. If you want to sort of remove a ten, for example, from this wheel section, you have to sort of go back to a let's let's go back to two D window. Right. Let's go back to a two D window. So we added A10 in that 2D window, right? Now let's try to delete A10 from the. Uh, we added A10 from that 3D window. Now let's try to delete A10 from the from the 2D window, right? Let's click on this. Click on this button. Delete wheel. Still, the operation is under X section one. Right? Uh, where's A10? That's A10, right? Let's click on this. Now that blue line from A16 to A10 has disappeared. Right. Again, let's go back to the viewing mode. And then uh, let's go back to the wheel section window. And now we go back to the three different wheels. There's no A10 here. Right, A10 has disappeared. Right. So that's how you can actually edit. How you can edit a uh, how you can edit an existing uh, wheel section from those 2D and 3D windows, right? But now let's 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 change the name of X section one. Let's let's change it to uh, to something more informative. C three to A sixteen, right? That might be a good uh, name, right? So for now, it's not sort of changing the X section one, the name display yet, uh, but it's okay. But it's okay. Later on, it's gonna once we sort of try to recreate a new three D window or something, then the correct name is gonna be displayed along this particular 
uh, fence diagram. Okay, so uh, suppose suppose you want to sort of not sort of uh, editing this particular cross section, right? You don't want to edit this particular cross section, this existing cross section. You want to sort of add new cross sections, again, right? So can you actually do that? Can you actually do? It? Um, it's not it's not difficult. So so all you have to do is to make this item not active, right? Don't don't make this item active, and then you can just uh, uh, X section editing, right? And then you can just uh, sort of um, did I did I actually for some reason it's uh, still active because it, I can see the f I can see the face of the font. Still black. See, black means this thing is still active, right? Maybe I should just uh, change the system settings. Now it's like uh, now it's um, not in the bold face, right? And then I click on cross section editing. Uh, now I can add new wheels, uh, create a new cross section for say C9, C7. So, what it actually is doing is that uh, as soon as I clicked on this uh, wheel, it's automatically created a one cross section called X section one. Right? And then it automatically created a wheel section window two for me. Which has the wheel that I just clicked. Right, C seven, I think. Right, and then if I keep clicking, say, uh, say, say C five, right, X section one, uh, and then maybe let's do another wheel. Uh, maybe A fifteen. Right. And now if I go back to the wheel section window two, I should be able to see like three different tracks. So the three different wheels, right? And then the default behavior is that it's not going to try to. Uh, so so the template, the template that's being applied here is some sort of uh, default value wheel section template two, which doesn't actually display the gamma ray, uh, the perm and uh, the porosity, right? But you can change it. You can change it by selecting, uh, for example, one existing template this gr perm pool is something that we just created once well, you have selected that particular uh, template then all the tracks that you have defined for that template are going to be uh, automatically added like gamma ray perm and porosity right and now if we go back to the uh, to the 3d view you're going to see two fence two wheel fences right uh, because both of them are being displayed both of them are being displayed of course you can turn off one of them right so now you can just see one fence one wheel fence right if you want to display both of them and then inside of the 2d window you should be able to see both cross sections also Right. That's uh, in the 2D window. So uh, it might be worthwhile to actually change the name. Don't use the default name X section one. That's not telling you much, right? It might be better to just, uh, because I turn off the, the slow double click. So now I have to sort of go back to the settings to change the, change the name of, uh, of this particular cross section, right? So uh, name X section one is not a, Good name. Maybe we should just change it to C seven. C seven to A fifteen. Oh, so now the name has changed. C three to A sixteen now. 
So this wheel fence has the name has changed to C3 to A16. And uh, the name for this fence hasn't been changed yet. The display of the fence hasn't been changed yet. Um, so if you go to the Windows tab, that's kind of a, a auto hiding window, right? The Windows tab is right here. If you move your cursor over there, then it's gonna sort of have a uh, automatic window sort of comes out of the edge, right? And if you move your cursor out, then that pane is gonna be automatically hide it, right? So if you move your cursor over, it's gonna show you all the wheels, or all the windows. All the windows that's active uh, that's uh that's uh, that can be viewed right you have a 3d window 2d window now you have two wheel section windows right and you can manage your windows from 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 this particular pin if you just uh, sort of turn off turn off wheel section window 2 by clicking on this uh, x right inside of the windows pin wheel section windows 2 is still going to be there it's still there right it doesn't mean that window is being displayed uh, it has been deleted if you wanted to get it back you can just click on the box in front of it right so if you don't want a particular window you want to delete it you have to sort of right click here and then it's going to give you an option that's delete you delete it are you sure you want to delete the uh, item wheel section window two yes and then in the Windows tab, uh, I don't have Windows sec uh, wheel section one, uh, window one anymore. All right. Um. So so now now uh, so now in the wheel section window one, we have just a C three to A sixteen. It's gonna display these three wheels, right? C three, B nine, A sixteen, right? And the C7 to A15 is automatically sort of hidden, right? So if we want to sort of see C7 to A15, we have to sort of click on the radio button in front of it. But different from a this kind of rectangular button, the rectangular button are going to allow you to see multiple things in the same window, right? But this kind of radio button is kind of mutually ex exclusive. So if you click on C7 to A15 inside this particular window, then it's going to ch all the logs are going to change to the logs for these three wheels, right? And then C3 to A16, the, the logs for these three wheels are going to disappear. You won't be able to see it in the same window, right? So, so those radio buttons are mutually exclusive. You can only see one of them at the at at one time. All right, but let's still go back to C3 and A16. Right. Still go back to C3 and A16. Um, now let's sort of look at how we can actually uh, manipulate uh, those logs and their display in a, a better way. Right. Um, but maybe this is uh, long enough for one video. Let's uh, let's stop here and try to make a different video.